Hi, it's Simon here from Fresh Projects. Uh, today we're going to be going over the project costing exercise that we recently did at the Business of Architecture UK event in London. Um, we've had quite a lot of response to that event with people coming to us asking us for the slides and for uh, understanding how the uh, calculations went so they can do it for themselves. So we're going to go over it again. Just some background on the event itself. Um, if you don't know, we had the Business of Architecture UK organized a get together. Uh, we had about 130 odd uh, architects there and it was a great evening with uh, uh, both this exercise that we're going to go through now, uh, which was held by myself and Fresh Projects and then followed by a, a very interesting panel discussion uh, hosted by Ryan Willard, um, where we, various aspects of running profitable businesses was discussed by some uh, very clever architects and developers. Um, this is the event, the exercise that we held, um, which was a project costing exercise, which we're going to go through in a second. Um, and just to recap exactly what this was about, if you weren't there, this is all going to be new to you. Um, but basically, we gave some information to everyone in the room, a uh, very simple income statement, which we'll see in a second, and some timesheet data uh, for a hypothetical uh, architectural practice called Awesome Architects. And this practice consists of three people, uh, the principal architect called Joe, uh, she has a draftsman who helps her called Jill, and an administrator called John. And Given this information uh, that you see here, which was handed out to everyone, the same information was handed out to everyone, um, the question was asked, how much did the one hour that Joe spent on project A cost in 2017? So the information given is a very simple income statement, basically just how much money did the practice earn and what did they spend on the expenses. And there's some timesheet data for the same period for the year of 2017 of how the three people spent their time uh, on the projects in that practice. Um, so the question was set, um, how much did the one hour that Joe spent on project A cost in 2017? Um, the, the crowd was given about 15, 20 minutes to, to calculate this. So they had to work in teams of two or three people. So it wasn't just working alone, they were uh, bright minds talking to each other. Um, and after the 20 minutes, everyone had to submit their um, answers via an app, and we had a look at the answers and went through the solution, which we're going to do again now. So these are the answers that came out of the exercise from um, all these clever people. So the first answer uh, we looked at, and in fact, had nothing to do with project costing. I was just interested because I had the theory that architects prefer iPhones to, to Android devices. And what we did is we tracked the answers that came from the people's mobile phones during the session. And in fact, I was right that, as you can see from the below bar, is that even though the UK average of iPhones to uh, Android is about 50-50, in that particular room, it was much higher. And in fact, there were a couple of non-architects in the room, which probably accounts for the, the, the small amount of Android devices that were there. This was the actual data that came out of the um, uh, exercise and each one of these dots represents uh, the answer that was given by one of the teams uh, where two or more teams had the same answer the dot is slightly bigger um, and as you can see the answers are uh, very startling from our point of view um, they should if everyone knew how to do this and was taught how to do this and was uh, aware of what is happening in their businesses there should really only be one, maybe two dots on the screen with everyone coming up with the same answer. But what is quite scary, as you can see, is that we've got a huge range of answers, ranging from five pounds an hour uh, to up to nearly 90 pounds an hour. So that's an 18 times difference between those two answers. Um, what's also quite interesting to see is that the bulk of the people came up with uh, some sort of answer between sort of 15 and 35 pounds. That's where the most, most people in the room uh, came up with. So, yeah, interesting. Uh, this graph here is showing us uh, the same answers, but we asked another question when they had to submit, is just how confident they are about their answer. So that was on a scale of 0 to 100%, and that's on the, the y-axis on the left-hand side. 
And then we've got the same answers in terms of what the rate is on the x-axis. So basically, um, in, again, if, if our industry was correct, there should be one dot again in this where everyone is 100% confident with the right answer. But the fact that we've got a lot of um, degrees of confidence, ranging degrees of confidence in our answers, also worrying. Like, uh, everyone should be fairly confident to work out what an hour of your time costs. So what was the right answer? Um, the right answer is that blue dot that's just appeared at the top in the middle. I'm 100% confident in that. Um, and the answer is 52 pounds. Uh, what is worrying is that almost everyone, apart from about seven or eight answers, uh, was less than this. And most of them were around about half this cost. So what are we saying is that the bulk of people in that room and the bulk of architects generally, so I do this exercise with architects all the time, um, and it's the same every single time, the bulk of architects undervalue their time almost by half. So. What's worrying with that is you're working out how much is a job going to cost you, and you think the 10 hours is going to cost me 100 pounds, but in fact it's going to cost you 200 pounds. And when you look at your fee that you charge your client, you're actually under costing it uh, by nearly half as well. So let's go through, and this is uh, what a lot of people have asked for, is the, the, the methodology and the understanding behind how to get to that answer of 52 pounds. So let's go back to our um, data that was presented to start off with. And the first thing we have to do is forget about income. So the, the question was how much does an hour cost? So it's got nothing to do with income, it's got nothing to do with profit. We just need to look at the expenses and divide that into the time that has been spent. First sort of bit, you, uh, not a red herring, but the, the bit that you need to be aware of uh, is that project related expenses. So the bits at the bottom here, uh, plotting and prints and subconsultants, those don't need to be included. Why? Because um, if you take a step back and think, why am I actually trying to work out what is in one hour of my time cost? It's because um, I want to know ultimately what the project costs. And project costs, so the plotting and prints and subconsultants, those are easily attributable to a project. So when you get the invoice from a subconsultant because they worked on a project, you know that that project can be allocated that cost that they spent. When it comes to hourly cost rates, that's, a, that's when you need to try and work out uh, dividing your other costs that aren't attributed to the project over the time that you've spent. So we're going to remove those project costs from the equation, forget about them. And now we're going to work out, um, there's really two key factors that you need to consider when working out your hourly labor cost rates. The first is your company overhead ratio. Okay? Now that, as you can see from the picture here, is defined as the ratio between all the expenses, but not including those direct project expenses that I've that are just deleted. Um, so all your expenses, the ratio of that to your technical salaries. Okay? So in this instance, it's 88,600 pounds compared to 62,000 pounds for Joe and Joe. John is not included in the salary cost because John is an overhead. How do I know that? If I look at uh, John's hours, I can see that he didn't spend a single hour on any project work. So he's only doing admin, he's answering the phone, he's helping around the office. Um, he's a complete overhead, so you don't have to worry about uh, costing him out individually. You can just take his cost and spread that amongst all the other projects as an overhead in the same way that you pay rent and you pay for software licenses and things like that. So in this case, uh, our overhead ratio is a factor of 1.43 which is 88,600 divided by 62,000. Um, another way of thinking of this overhead ratio is to say that for every one pound I spend on salaries of architects, so people actually doing project work, for every one pound I spend on an architect, I'm spending another 43 pence on actually supporting that architect in terms of the rent, the IT, the guy on screen, the phone. Okay, so that's the first key factor you need to know when doing this calculation, is your company overhead ratio. The other factor you need to know for, in the, and in this case we're looking at Joe, that was what the question was about, is what is the utilization ratio? Now this is defined as the ratio of the time they spend on project work versus non-project work. So it's, uh, and, and we've, to make this easy, we've made it exactly equal. So we said Joe spent 1,040 hours working on projects in total over the year. 
um, and she also spent a thousand and forty hours working on non-project work, so going on leave, uh, bank holidays, training, running the business, all those sort of things. Those hours have to be paid for by something, uh, so that's where the utilization work comes into that. Uh, the other way of looking at this, uh, thinking about this utilization ratio, is to uh, think that for every one hour you spend on a project, in this case, I'm spending another hour doing other things in my business uh, to support those projects, but ultimately they're going to have to be paid for by my projects because that's the only place we have to do Okay, so let's put it all together to work out our cost rate. So the first thing to do is obviously to take Joe's salary, which is 38,000 pounds, and divide it by the number of hours that she uh, worked in the year. So her average hourly cost rate uh, for the 2,000 hours, about 38,000 pounds, about 2,000 hours, is 18 pounds an hour. So for every hour that she's in the office, she's costing 18 pounds an hour. But now we have to inflate that for her utilization ratio. So even though she's in the hours in the office for eight hours a day, and out of those eight hours, she's only spending four hours on project work, and the other four hours have to be paid for. So in essence, uh, you divide by point, uh, divide by zero point five, it comes back two, and you're essentially doubling the cost of the hours. So you're saying for those four hours that she's in the office every day and working on projects, uh, we take the cost of the non-project time and dump it onto that. So if we go from 18 pounds an hour to 36 pounds an hour. And the final step is then to allocate the overhead so that while she's in the office, the cost of the rent, the IT, job monitoring the phone has to be allocated to her time as well. And that you do by multiplying by the company overhead ratio of 1.43. So you take 36 multiplied by 1.43 and you'll get to 52.21 pounds, which is the cost of one hour for Joe. So how do I actually know that I'm right and I can be 100% confident? Well, let's do a quick sanity check on this. Um, if I am right, then if you took the hourly cost rate of Joe and the hourly cost rate of Jill and you multiply it by all the time they've spent on their projects, you should come to the same cost of running your business. So uh, in, in this picture here, the, all the numbers in purple that add up to 88 thousand pounds should be the same as if I multiply the cost rates of all the hours I've spent in projects, which is the green hours at the top, and those two numbers should be green. So let's do it quickly. Um, so if I do that same calculation we've just been through for Joe, do that for Jill as well, you'll find that her actual cost, uh, hourly cost rate is 18 pounds an hour, and Joe says, as we said, it was 52. And then I take the number of hours they've spent on projects. So in Joe's case, it was a thousand odd hours, and in Jill's case, she did a thousand eight hundred hours. And if I multiply eighteen by a thousand eight hundred for Jill, and fifty-two uh, pounds an hour times a thousand hours for Joe, um, you will see I get fifty-four and thirty-four thousand pounds for each of them. And if I add those two numbers together, I'll come to exactly eighty-eight thousand six hundred. So I now can feel confident that my hourly rate times my project hours is covering all the costs in my business, apart from the uh, direct project of costs, like blocking, printing, and sub consultants. Okay, so this, just to finish off, is the actual answers we got in the event in the evening. Um, we coded up the, the live page so that if anyone got the right answer to within one pound, plus minus, it would turn green. Um, and as you can see, not a single person came to within one pound um, there were a few people who were within 10 pounds, which is within 20% of the right answer, um, which is not very good. Uh, there was about three of those. And what's quite scary is that the, the worst answers were nearly uh, sort of 100% out. They were 40 pounds out of 50 pounds out. Um, and also maybe quite interesting is that all the panelists also got it wrong. So it's not just you, don't worry. Okay, final note is just to say, um, well, that is obviously a very useful exercise to know and to understand how these things work, the principles. You don't have to remember it all. Um, there are awesome tools out there, like Fresh Projects, that can help you do this. So this is a screenshot from our web application. Uh, Fresh Projects will allow you to work out your costs on a project very quickly in a, in a couple of seconds. It takes care of all the uh, costing of your resources. You just put in your salaries and how many hours per day they work. 
um, and the system will work out for you what those costs are automatically. It allows you to work out the costs over a project that runs months or years uh, very quickly in a couple of seconds. Uh, and then allows you to track your costs in real time as you're spending time on those projects to make sure that you actually are meeting that budget um, and you know, that the spending and it's all going to be profitable. We also allow you to do fee calculations and fee proposals with a single click and you can do invoicing to your clients and track your payments. Um, and we also give you very awesome dashboards so that you can see exactly which projects are making money, which projects are losing money, which clients uh, are making money, which clients you should be working for, which clients you shouldn't be working for. So if you want to find out more, um, head over to www.freshprojects.cloud and you can uh, sign up for a free trial and have a little play. And otherwise, if you want to get hold of me, it's simon at freshprojects.cloud. And that's it. Thank you very much for your time.